What's up guys, it's Eli Knight with Knight Jiu Jitsu and uh, I've got a video for you today and um, in addition to having a video for you, I've also um, wanted to send a shout out to um, Supernatural Survival Gear for this amazing gi. Um, I just got this uh, the other day and I was, I was like really surprised. I thought it looked awesome and I was talking to Kent Peters and, and he's been promoting this stuff and I'm like, okay, it looks cool. I'm going to get one just because it looks cool. This is one of the best fitting geese I think I've ever worn, and it's got one of the, some of the coolest designs and stuff on it. So I, I uh, highly recommend uh, Supernatural Survival Gear. If you haven't seen me wearing a ton of it in other videos, you would know that. Um, and also, Alex is back. Look at that. So <laughs> we found him wandering in the desert for a few months, and uh, we, we dragged him back in here on the mats. So <laughs> we're going to talk about clock chokes today, um, because this has come up a couple times in the past uh, past week, probably more than that in the past couple weeks. And it seems like just trends happen every once in a while. And what I, I see people chase in the back a lot of times when they're wearing here and we're training. And I was like, you know, you're really bypassing a lot of clock choke opportunities. And so I want to really take a video to focus on the benefits, the versatility, the usefulness of the clock choke. Basically, the clock choke uh, gets its name from kind of this TikTok fashion that it walks around to tighten the choke. And you kind of see what we mean. Uh, the basic application of it is typically in the turtle position. And that's why people get here a lot of the time and they start looking for how can I open these wedges and spaces to be able to get my hooks in, drag and take his back. But I don't have to get all my hooks in to be able to get the clock choke. I just have to get good grips on the collar and some kind of finishing hold and then station myself in the right kind of proximity to him. So the first um, application we're gonna look at, kind of the traditional old school kind of way to do it, is first is I wanna loosen the collar. So I can just grab on the back of this. Now, I'm not gonna make that much space, obviously. What I'm trying to do is I'm pinning my knee on the outside of his knee. I'm pinning my elbow over here by his hip. So I'm controlling and over here by his shoulder. So I'm controlling these points of his uh, foundation to where if he tries to move any kind of way to regard or roll out or anything, I've got a pretty good ability to control that movement, to slow it down and possibly to follow it. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna pull this space here behind his collar open. That's gonna make space on either side of this lapel as well. So once I do that now, I'm gonna shoot this through and I'm gonna start with this little, uh, this little thumb part here, a little stuff box, and I wanna drive this through and underneath to the cross side collar. I want the back of my hand touching the side of his neck here so I'm not turning around and getting a Muppet grip like this here. Instead, I'm waving away this way. I get my thumb inside, I get a nice good grip. The second hand is where things change a little bit. So basic application, old school way that I was taught it, which is still great, is either grabbing in here on the wrist or even better if I can, getting the blade of the hand here like this. This is a really good grip here. It really makes it difficult for him to grab a hold of my choking hand, makes it hard for him to get use of this arm, straighten his arm, anything like that. So now once I have this grip established on his neck, I have this one established here on his hand, I wanna step this leg forward and my goal here now is to start to try to slide my ribs, especially like my floating rib, to the base of his skull, the back of his neck up here. And so I do that by stepping up one, sliding, taking my uh, secondary leg underneath, and look how I walk. My chest and hips stay in this orientation, and I keep walking around, turning like this here. And as I do, I'm pulling this up and back. So it gets really tight, really fast. So I'm in here, I open the space, I shoot through underneath his neck, I get nice and deep with that thumb grip, I get my fingers inside, I come through, I grab the palm or even the wrist, palm's better. And then as I start walking through one and two like this here, and it's very tight, very fast. So you have to let go. So um, what I was talking about though with the second hand that's grabbing here on the, the blade of his hand, it can go in different locations if that's not available. And some of them uh, are kind of stylistic preferences, but other ones uh, offer me different opportunities. Um, one of my uh, personal favorites, we'll skip straight to it, is getting the pant grip right here. So if it's available where I have this little wrinkle of pant material, that's one of my favorite places to grab. Sometimes if it's not available, what I can do is use this elbow to pull him this way and loosen that space. And so now I get my fingers tucked inside like that. That coupled with my first grip here that I already had established. Now, whenever I start to slide through, I'm gonna drop my ribs to the back of his neck. I'm gonna put my forehead on the ground over here, but my legs are gonna continue that walking motion forward as we did in the previous variation. I'm gonna go here this way, that way here. What that does is it creates this pyramid structure with my body directed over the back of his skull. So if Alex tries to rotate one way or another, he's really just gonna make it a lot harder on himself. If he rotates the wrong way, he's basically gonna to try to cut his head off. It's gonna feel like it anyway. 
And um, if he rotates to try to replace the guard, it's gonna be very difficult to do that as well because of the direction of how I have the pants and here and where my head is located. So those are two really good variations there. Now, there's some other modified variations here too. Like um, whenever I get to this position here, sometimes I'm having trouble getting this one on, on a grip on the hand or on the pant here like this. Sometimes I can get a sliding collar where I get the second lapel. This also works so we can finish it the same way. When I'm looking down, I'm starting to drive over and I'm also, not only am I pulling like this uh, bent over row uh, position like this, but I'm also tightening by pulling down on the other side of the lapel. So what's happening, sit up for just a second. We go here and pulling down, so it's a sliding collar kind of action. That, coupled with the idea that I have other weight over the back of them here, and I'm up on my toes, keeping my hips low, um, that's a very powerful, uh, very powerful variation right there. I have to be careful on all of these that if my chest gets too far over, I may get rolled if he decides to like uh, cut and turn toward me. So if I'm doing any of these and I lean over too far and he turns to face me, I'm gonna get rolled this way. I'm gonna lose position and that's no good. So that's why it's important to have good weight distribution between my hips, get that good walking kind of motion that way. Um, another, now we start to look at, well, I can't get the hand maybe, I can't get the pant grip that I wanted, I can't get the lapel on the side, so what can I do with this arm here? Um, I'm gonna be honest, this is not my favorite, but I've seen a lot of people do it really well and um, they like it a whole lot, so it might be the one for you. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting this grip here on the collar. I'm having a difficult time getting my hand placement anywhere else, so I'm just gonna throw it over to this side. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my tricep, I'm wedging it against Alex's uh, face and neck here and I'm driving my elbow toward the floor. And as I do that, I'm stepping and sitting through. Very powerful, this is the motion here. Extremely powerful grip on that one. Um, and it blocks his face away, so it makes it very difficult for him to turn and face me and replace his guard. This one is um, the fancy version, and <laughs> just because it's fancy doesn't mean it's not effective. There's another uh, situation where I can't necessarily find a good grip with this second hand, but I did manage to get myself located in the right position, and I did manage to get this good grip inside his collar. So what I want to do with this one here is since I'm, I'm having trouble, he's keeping the spaces tight or something, I'm going to reach this one here, I'm going to palm it right on the small of his back, and as I step up this way, I'm gonna kick my leg all the way around to this side here, this direction, and I wanna tuck through underneath his arm so that as I come through this way, I'm gonna finish it hugging up like this. My leg is tight. I can even uh, figure four of my legs here and pull nice and tight squeeze. It's a very strong way to finish it. And you can also do a variation on the same one where I come here, I get inside, I can't find it, I kick out all the way through this way. I can also get to here and finish with like a sliding collar or possibly a modified single wing kind of position like that. So um, again, that's sometimes called a uh, tornado clock choke on that one. Um, really cool one to do uh, to make it a little fancier, but just because it's fancy doesn't mean it's not effective like we mentioned before. So again, great to have Alex back and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And again, big shout out to Supernatural Survival Gear. Uh, check out their, their, not only their geese, their geese are some of the newest things on the line, but their no geese stuff has been awesome for a long time. So check them out. And I appreciate you guys watching that Jiu Jitsu channel.